good evening. I welcome mm -hmm. all our viewers. Good evening, Vitesh. I welcome all our viewers to this IAI3 EduTalk session. Now, today is a very auspicious day for us because this is our 25th interview, Silver Jubilee. And I also find that our young couple, they are also very, very lucky for us. So I welcome you, Dr. Pritesh and Dr. Hiral. Thank you so much for coming on to our show. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you for having us here. Yes, thank you. And what a pleasure to see you both. <laughs> so IAI3 EduTalk, this was an initiative of our president, Dr. Neeta Parati. And as we promised, we had brought people who had expertise in different careers, whether they were from the ITT or the OTT, or they were actually from the internet or hardcore engineering, authors, editors, and also image consultants. So what has transpired now that in every field, there is a specialization, you know, and also in the medical field. So a lot of in-depth and intense training goes on for specialization. And that is what we are going to speak to Dr. Pritesh and Dr. Hiral about. Now, gone are those days when we used to go to the family doctor and he used to give us white and pink color goalies. <laughs> Whatever was the ailment, we used to take them. And there was some form of liquid doctor's orders number yes. nine. Yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> or they put a red color tincture on bruises and cuts. Yes. So <laughs> those days are a thing of the past. So our vision was to call people who would come and share their trajectories, their training and how they started their work, the skills they acquired, the people they employed, and also the people they healed or they uh, helped along their way. Mm -hmm. And so the second vision we had in mind was to showcase stories of very simple, ordinary people who helped humanity at large. So during the COVID, the pandemic, there were many such examples where people came forward and helped others. They jumped into the areas where the virus was wreaking havoc. So mm -hmm. we've had many COVID warriors on our show as well. So I am Anjali Sangvi. I'm a soft skills trainer and I am your host for this evening. It is a profound honor for me to introduce to you Dr. Pradesh Shah, chiropractor, and Dr. Mrs. Hiral Shah, sports physiotherapist and Pilates trainer. Now, both of them, they have a couple goals. They want to provide advanced healthcare treatment and rehabilitation under one roof. So they have got a clinic called Levels in Koregaon Park in Pune. In addition to these lines of treatment, there are various several other lines of treatment as well. Now, Dr. Pitesh and Dr. Hiral, they have done their masters from the Manipal Medical College. They were married in December 2020. So that makes them a newly married couple. And so now they believe that every patient who comes to them is an individual. They have their unique anatomy. They have their own physical, mental, and chemical buildup. And so a uh, one-on-one -one assessment takes place and a line of treatment is formulated specifically and aligned to the patient's needs. Now, along the way, they ask their patients to take a very active role in the rehabilitation process so that there is a lot of synergy. And this helps recovery, repair, management, and also rehabilitation, prevention. Now, in the clinic itself, the lines of treatment that are available are, of course, mainly chiropractic medicine, sports physiotherapy, Pilates training, as well as physiotherapy for uh, orthopedic musculoskeletal conditions, yoga, pranic healing, reiki, dry needling, and gym rehabilitation, also post-operative reha rehabilitation. So we are in conversation with Dr. Pratesh Shah, Dr. Hiral Shah, and a second time, I welcome you to our show. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you, thank you. So Dr. Pitesh, in the olden days, we used to traditional treatment, we used to hear of bone setters. 
Now, the work of a chiropractor in the modern times doesn't have anything to do with bone setting. Correct. Yes. Correct. So you, I'll tell you the brief. That's a very good question. In fact, a lot of people ask me that. So we want to change, we want to basically first know what a bone setter is. Yes. So in the olden times, there was an ancestral uh, heritage where they would do a proper spinal manipulation or a manipulation to the bone. Basically, if there's a cracked bone or a dislocated bone, okay. so the bone setters would manually adjust the bone back in its place. That is like the true bone setter. Wow. If somebody crumpled their ankle or somebody dislocated the elbow, like you see commonly the shoulder dislocations now. So what the doctors in the hospitals are doing is called close reduction. It's basically putting the bone back in. Oh. So that's what used to be done in the previous days. That's what a bone setter really is. Yes. And it's very different from chiropractic because bone setting did not require any medical training. There is no background study, so it was just an ancestral information passed on, like a skill, basically, I would say. They would say that they feel the bone is out of place. Now, everything doesn't work on feeling, which is a very subjective thing. Because if everything worked by feeling, then uh, there's, there's a miscalculation over there. So, whereas in chiropractic, there's a lot of medical background study, and you know the eligibility is post-graduation in any field that you have pertaining to medical. That's either physiotherapy, or orthopedics. So once that is once once that qualification is fulfilled, then you are eligible to pursue chiropractic. So yes. a lot of uh, years of medical study, medical background, where we rule out there's any injuries within, or there's any tumors or any red flags that bar us from adjusting the spine. So chiropractors are basically correcting the misalignments in any joint in the body, not just the spine. The spine happens to be our main uh, area. But right. By misalignment, I mean the bones are out of place, but when there's a slight uh, shift in its main alignment, we call it a subluxation. Okay. So we as chiropractors are basically addressing that subluxation, and when you then mm -hmm. the commonly hear a crack. So most people think that's the bone setting back in place. No, whenever a bone sets back in place, it's very painful. Okay. I mean, if the guys who have injured their shoulder or dislocated their shoulders and got it relocated, ask them about it. It's very painful. Whereas wow. chiropractic is giving the exact opposite effect. It's, it's leading to immense relief. So the when we opposite. Like the opposite, exactly. So when we clear the subluxation in the joint, there's something called as a cavitation. It's like a lot of gas bubbles, mainly nitrogen, carbon dioxide, and oxygen. So whenever a carbon dioxide bubble releases from the joint space, it, it has a lot, it has a huge pop. So it's basically a lot of, if this is the joint and it's getting compressed in one area, there's a gas bubble there. So we basically pop that back in and so the, the joint depressurizes. Oh, I see. I see. You can, you can uh, think of it like a champagne bottle. There's <laughs> immense pressure and you pop it and there's a huge sound and then there's a gush. So oh. something similar. So that's how different chiropractic and bone setting is. We don't actually put bones back in place. Yes. That's a misconception by people. When we crack their spine, they think we're moving the vertebrae or, or their spine you know, in the integrity. That's not possible. So yes. If there's a slight subluxation with repeated chiropractic, we can shift it a bit. But moving the spine is not, the spine is very hard, it's very strong. So yes. you cannot just manipulate it like that. So we're not bone setting the spine. So that is the main vivid difference between what bone setters do and what chiropractic uh, entails. I hope that uh, answers your question. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. With a lot of clarity. Yes. And then, uh, Dr. Pratish, uh, typically if a patient comes to you with aches and pains, and does it come under the uh, you know, wider scope or the umbrella of chiropractic medicine? Oh, yes. Of course. Of course. I mean, that, uh, another good question. Very right? nice. So there's a lot of things for pain relief. Like you said, it's an umbrella. Yes. And any client can hold any umbrella and they can get pain relief. But what we give you is a nice brain coat. So you're right. not wet anywhere. So if the chiropractic happens to be one of the leading or one of the best in the world, along with osteopathy, to provide pain relief. So like I mentioned, when there's subluxations in the joint, there is a lot of muscle tension. There is a lot of neural irritation that comes with it. Ah, so right. Nobody will know that there's a subluxation. They just come with pain, isn't it? Yes, exactly. Exactly. So we evaluate the muscles, we check the nerves, we check the bone integrity, we check the joint integrity. After that, we find out 
what is jam and then we you know we start working that way so pain relief chiropractic would be like number one in terms of efficiency okay so i am not negating the allopathic field or the homeopathic field or the ayurvedic field everybody yes. serves their own purpose yes yoga does a very very big and good job in pain relief but if there's specific issues that hinder you from doing anything yes chiropractic happens to be the best and the most efficient way to get a job done Oh wow! There's people with back pain, people with neck pain. If they have a stuck muscle, we can address the muscle. Right. But because of the misalignment in the spine, no matter what you do to the muscle, you stretch it, you release it. There is no use. They will feel good for the time being. But I need to address the joint misalignment and also the neural irritation, the muscle uh, spasms that come along. So to make it very easy to understand, if I consider your spine to be stacked on top of like each other, like boxes. Right. right. And the muscles, if you imagine it to be like cables tied to those boxes. Oh yes. Um, you're going to complain of the ropes or the cables hurting you. So everybody goes for the cable. Nobody goes for the box. Yes. I I basically release your box, depressurize your boxes, so the cable tension goes down faster than it should. Wow. It's instant. It's like for for the clients, it's like I did magic, because they've been suffering for so many years, and suddenly it's gone. Because I cut the main guy out, because I'm I'm releasing the tension in the box, so the cable is not longer holding it tight. But that's, so that's how the immediate pain relief is uh, provided. That's why immediately freedom of movement. There's improved range of motion. There is less apprehension, no guarding, no neural irritation. So all of this combined is the first and foremost thing for pain relief. So you don't just come when you have something stuck. If you're having pain issues, also even if it's the most minor. We find out where it's coming from and we fix it in one shot. That's, that's how it's good. Fantastic! Very enlightening to know that that you know you have to address the different types of muscles and nobody works on the spine. Exactly, exactly. So that's because many guys have issues in the elbow or the shoulder, but the yes. main issue is in the spine. So there's no point working only on the elbow and the shoulder. Right. You always have to consider the spine because that's where your entire life is revolving around. It's it's your foundation tree. Oh, okay. So we need to keep the the trunk clear, not just work with the branches of the tree. So that's how I I see the body as it's like a tree. That's really enlightening to know that. And then uh, do you also feel that uh, anyone who gets a sports injury, so does do they come to you, uh, a chiropractic person, a doctor like you, to get treatment to get healed? Oh yes, yes, yes. Of course, of course. Because see, for sportsmen, they they they're seemingly very strong. Yes, they are seen more capable in the population, and people feel that no, these guys are very fit. They don't have injuries. In fact, these are the guys who are having the most injuries because if they're training for something, let's say they if someone's training for football, right. they will learn to kick the ball in a specific way a hundred times, a thousand times, you know, and yes. still have an injury. Yes. So people are worried that I've trained for this. How do I have an injury? And another example is somebody going in the gym and lifting heavy weights, yes. and they're nice and bulky, but they bend down to pick up something and they get a catch in the back. In the back, yes. A lot of these very common things. So it takes a very uh, bad hit on the mind, thinking that if I can lift so much in the gym, I can't do this small task. That's right. That's because the sports injuries, when we repeatedly do something, any underlying issue that is already present starts to become highlighted. It's only when you start to move you actually know there might be something wrong. So we enhance sports by using chiropractic, by aligning the spine, all the joints, and then facilitating what they're already doing. We do not say that no, stop training, uh, come and do chiropractic session. That makes no sense. Yes, exactly. It's like you have a car and you start driving the car, and then you start to feel all the niggles and all the shakes and every everything. If you don't use it, you know, you won't know. Yes, that's sure. Especially ladies, you know, they believe ladies don't know anything about the car, but nowadays they they are training themselves. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, so lot of small things, you know, you have these all these small small muscle injuries, and everybody's just targeting their muscles. Nobody's clearing their joints. Nobody's working on how the how the bones move, how they decompress, compress. So, you know, you work on that, and all the other small secondary issues are all subsided. So. Sports. In fact, I see a lot of athletic population as well. I see two extremes: sedentary and completely athletic. Wow. And both are equally bad in their own respect. Yes. yes. I have to get them in their gray area and then just keep them moving. 
Yes, exactly. Draw a balance of some kind. Right? Exactly. So instead of telling somebody to cut down their sport, or because for somebody is their life, somebody is their bread and butter, for somebody is their passion, they can't live without. Yes. So we make them execute their lifestyle rather than cutting them down. We reduce the risk of injury by keeping them in shape, keeping them in check. So it's basically you're driving down a car to Pune and Mumbai all the time. I'm the mechanic and I make sure your tires and your axle and everything is working and is in check. I don't stop you from commuting. <laughs> yeah, that's an that's amazing the, analogy. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Nice. And most of them, uh, they must be feeling it's like a miracle that actually their pain has gone after so many years. And when they yeah, thought exactly. they couldn't, uh, isn't it? That's so nice. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not magic, magic, it's just science. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Uh, what are the typical myths which surround uh, a, a person's visit to a chiropractor's clinic? Oh, there's numerous, numerous. Oh, Considering the field is not... Yeah, because nobody knows about this. They just heard about it and uh, half the guys don't even know what it means. And yes. when I say we're going to we're going to crack your spine, they think I'm a bone setter, which goes back to your first question. Exactly. So, exactly. And, and the first and four, foremost myth these people have is like, oh my God, I might end up paralyzed. I might, I might end up breaking my bone. Because there are incidents in the past where bone setters in the villages or yes. somewhere have made mistakes because they don't know what's underlying in the tissue or there's a tumor or there's already a fracture present. And they happen to do, practice the same skill on everybody. So whoever walks in, they do the same skill set and they kind of, uh, you know, adjust the spine. So they end up killing people that way. So people have got that stigma or that fear that, oh, if I go to a chiropractor, if he manipulates my neck, I might die. No, chiropractic is the safest to practice when you know what you're doing. Yes. So it's not, and we, we use safe positions that are medically sound and we practice in this countless hours involved, there's years of our times involved, you know, where we really practice, 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 and then we do something and you get that relief in five minutes. That's it's right. five years of hours which gives you five minutes of relief. That's right. You, uh, so that's the first and foremost myth. So nobody can, nobody's capable of breaking your spine unless you land up in a road traffic accident. Because, you know, ideally speaking, the spine takes at least 300 kgs to break. Oh. There, wow. There's lots of maneuvers where they involve, they put a strap here and we distract the whole spine. I don't know, a lot of people on YouTube must have seen it. I practice it as well. So yes. the first question was, can we break the neck? But idly speaking, the way they used to break the neck in the olden days is called the hangman's injury, where they used to tie the rope here, the noose, oh. and drop you from a height of three meters. Oh my. Yes, and that's when the vertebrae would break. So it's you calculate the height, the velocity, and the weight of the individual, then you're capable of breaking someone's neck. If it was a light body, they would drop it from a, a longer, uh, sorry, a higher height. Yes, yes. If it was a heavier person, then a shorter height. Because they would account for all these things. So that's how it, how intense it should be to break somebody's thing. So yes. that's the first myth. We don't break anything. We're not capable of breaking anything. <laughs> so that's one, one myth and one fear that, oh, I don't want to see a chiropractor. What if he breaks my neck? What if he breaks my back? Yes. They're already in pain. So yes. we understand that. But that's not the case. And and then the like, yeah, can I go on? Yeah. Yes, of course. In fact, our audience is okay, really okay. still. Please tell us. I don't want people to lose out on me because I might I talk fast, so I'm trying to slow down a bit. So that's why. So then coming, there's another myth that uh, people think is you have to be old, you have to be injured, yes, or you have to be in pain to see me. No, that's that's a myth. Pain is the last thing to come. Before that, this underlying condition that keep rolling, keep rolling till your immunity is at peak, till you feel that your body's functioning at optimal. Only then you're fine. Only when the perception of pain starts, people run to doctors. Now, chiropractic is the same. Like You don't wait for something to happen to treat it. Yes. It's exactly. like you're parking your car in the garage and one day I have to go to Mumbai and then I'll take my car. No, you've got to keep playing small drives. You've got, to keep, you've got to keep visiting the center to see if the fuel tank is fine, the oil tank is fine, the filters are in place, You know all those things. I would equate that mostly with my work because you don't have to be in pain. You don't have to be injured to see me because exactly. everybody's walking yes. around with an injury waiting to happen. So That's it's like right. the underlying small, small issues that are there building up day in, day out till it reaches their threshold and they collapse. And COVID has done a very good
good job of highlighting the weakness in people by making them aware of how really weak their immune systems are and they need to build up. So basically focus more on Ayurveda, focus more on the diet, put, eat healthy, and then all these things are kept in check. So it's the same thing for me. So you don't have to be in pain to do a chiro session. You can always have these spaced out sessions where you keep your body in check because at the end of the day, it's a machine. The way you use it uh, depends on how much wear and tear you accumulate. And everybody's got wear and tear. There's not a single person who doesn't have it. You won't have it. Exactly. Even the aging yeah. process must be setting in. Exactly. And from aging, that tells me that takes me to the third myth. So the people think that only a certain portion of the population is supposed to see that I can't see kids. How can you crack a kid's neck? How can you crack a kid's back? He's just a kid. No, the chiropractic is done from babies aging from one year till the age of 95. Wow. Provided all the radiological scans, provided all the things that are in the clinic. So there's heavy investigation involved. We don't just pick up a baby and start snapping at them. Yes. It's only when you need to do it. So and when it's like really necessary. So yes, we can intervene with kids as well. Because people think of the same thing. Kids are very healthy. They just fall, they break here and there. But no, these injuries start at their age and they stay with them. They keep building up till they're in teenage or adolescent life. And then we start asking them questions and we start going backtracking. And right. then we get to know that 10 years back, there was an ankle injury. 10 years back, there was a shoulder injury. Wow. And that's, that's like basically the inception of all the issues they have today. Yes, it's a build up. So that time. Yeah, and, and half the people don't even remember they had it. That's the that's the best part. So you know, they think it just started two months back. And yes. when we evaluate them, it doesn't look like that. It looks like it's a huge load of issues. And then they want quick fixes and then they want to be back yes. and running. Yes, this is the age of nobody gets. Yeah, so so chiropractic that way is compressing 10 years of injury in 10 sessions. There is no comparison to that. Yes. That's just like an example. Like, you know, that's how fast things work. Sure. So, there's so many myths, uh, you know, relating to all of these things. But and that's why they think oh, adjustments will hurt. What if they crack my neck? Will it cause me pain? No, they, they don't cause you pain because we're not pushing the bone. We're not doing anything to the bone. That's right. In fact, it's not Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And they also they also think that people who've got implants cannot do chiropractic. Yes, yeah. that is partly true. If you've got a knee replacement, then there are restrictions of me doing anything to the knee. But you have, if the same person has a shoulder injury, a neck injury, a lower back injury, yes, chiropractic can be intervened. Yes, yes. And same for the old population. They think, oh, they're very brittle. You know, they've got osteoporosis. Yes. I might break the bone. No, like I said, you cannot address the bone bone. But there's an issue in old people where there's bony outgrowths in the spine. We have to be careful of that. So whenever somebody elderly comes to me, we take radiological scans. We check everything. If everything is clear, then we proceed. It's like a green signal. That, right. okay, you can do manipulation. So people with osteoporosis, anemia yeah. are very typically scared of these reactions. But no, it's safe. We do our scans. We have DEXA scan. We have DMD. We've got all kinds of things today available. So we won't make mistakes the bone centers used to make at that time. We'll just come, lie you down and start, uh, you know, cracking every single joint in your body. That's we have to study. Right. Yeah, we have to study what needs to be moved and what doesn't need to be moved. So chiropractic is just a skill set. The education, the background behind it is teaching you when to use it and how much to use it. That is the main point of it. That's right. It's for relief. It's not for getting more pain. Yeah, just because oh, I have a skill set doesn't mean everybody walking into my clinic is getting a crack left, right and center. No, that yeah. is not the case. And, uh, you know, for you, the when you see a, a person, a patient who comes to you and he is actually getting relief from his pain, the the satisfaction and the joy, it must be immeasurable. Yes, yes, yes. So whatever remuneration they give me for my services is nothing compared to the joy on their faces, knowing that somebody sleeps well at night, knowing yes. that somebody was suffering so much for so many years, is suddenly pain-free, suddenly doing things that they never did for so long. It could be as simple as going to the store or getting down into the society. So we're helping such people who've been Having been missing out on the simplest of activities in daily life and only being frustrated because popping pills, going to the doctors, you know, just taking scans, again popping pills and they're back home. Yes. But nobody's improving the quality of their life. Nowadays, quantity is not enough. It's quality of life that's more important. That's, sure. that's where we come into picture to maximize that for you. That's right. 
to make you get the most out of life. That's right. Absolutely, absolutely. And how did you choose uh, chiropractic medicine over all the other disciplines that are available to a doctor? Because that is the best. <laughs> no, to, to be honest, like physiotherapy is more of moving the way you move, moving the right way with correct biomechanics, you know, with postural changes, ergonomic advices, and all of that stuff. But then there's a limitation. Uh, physiotherapy doesn't teach you how to go to the core of the issue. Chiropractic goes straight to the core of the issue. Okay. So there's chiropractic and there's osteopathy, which are leading in the world right now. In fact, I'll be applying for my osteopathy this year. Right. So to have one more feather in my cap, because it's, it's, it's more holistic that way. It deals okay. with the organs also. So when we work with the core of the engine, we treat the whole engine. Otherwise, physiotherapy is like you're treating a branch of the tree because it's hurting, but I am treating the whole tree. Yes, that's right. Now you get spine. So chiropractic happens to be on the top of medicine right now. Where allopathy works, allopathy works. Where chiro works, it works there. So that happens to be the biggest skill set that I have in accelerating everybody's uh, issues. So everybody coming to me, doesn't. I don't stop them from taking homeopathy pills. I don't tell them no. Uh, stop stretching. I don't tell them, no, don't do yoga. No, no, everything will carry on. Chiropractic will maximize the quality and the efficiency of what you do yes. without the wear and tear that you might accumulate while doing it. So it's not as simple as going to the gym and just lifting weights and getting strong. Yes. You're not just getting strength, you're getting a lot of uh, tension with it, you're getting a lot of wear and tear with it. And it's my job to keep that in check, keep it to the minimum, and keep you going without injuries. So that is why chiropractic happens to be the best. So I went out of the way and pursued that because if tomorrow something comes above chiropractic, I will head for that. Oh, yes, really. So what is this other uh, line of learning you just said? Osteo, what is that? Osteopathy. Osteopathy is. Oh, okay. even, even they are involved in doing spinal manipulations and they also treat the organs that are connected to specific areas of the spine. Wow. Oh. And they have different techniques, yeah, different techniques as chiropractors, but they end up doing the manipulation anyways, but they also treat the organs. So it's basically the missing link, yes. and that's it. There's nothing else left in the body. Right. And is the, the studies, the course, is it available in India? No, the unfortunate part about this is none of these courses are available in India okay. because of, uh, you know, there's a lot of panel issues in Delhi where people are not allowing these courses to start in India because it's endangering a lot of uh, pharmaceutical and allopathic practices. Wow. So that's like an integral, that's like a very minute portion of what I want to share with you. And other things is there is no skill set available or eligibility available for the Indian population to pursue it. Okay. It's the mindset. So yeah, so that is why the biggest of the biggest universities in Pune or Delhi or Bangalore or anywhere in the country are unable to obtain permission considering the risks considering the population is incapable of probably practicing it yes. and third is endangering the old orthodox paradigms that are in place but you go outside it's a different world it's a complete opposite anything happens they first run to their physio or to their chiro they sort it out and they're back yes, yes. in india it's still catching up people always prefer to go to their family doctor first their general physician first yes. take the pill and sit quietly and they build up with that pain. So it's about time things are changing. It's much better now as opposed to five years back. A lot of awareness and a lot of education people are coming back to India to serve right. the country. Right. So yeah, hopefully one day in India we get quality services and you know people, big, big universities coming down and laying their foundation here yeah. to help people because India is a very populated country and we are very scarce. Oh. So it's almost negligible that chiropractors are available in any part of the city. I mean, I know two in Delhi, one in Bangalore, one, two in Hyderabad, you know, that's how scarce things are. Yes, yes. Uh, so that's why. Ritesh, excuse me, uh, Dr. Nita, we, we are not supposed to admit any other people. We will okay. ask them to go on, uh, you know, people are asking Dr. Nita if they can join the meeting. So okay. we will request those folks to please uh, watch the interview on the Facebook, IAI3 Facebook. So uh, Nita ji, uh, we don't need to admit any more people. Thank you. See, this is the mindset of the Indian populace, which we feel by and large, uh, even if a lady develops cancer, she would rather go to a witch doctor and not go to a hospital to get treatment. Precisely. So, uh, we need to, you know, uh, that's why we, we're really hoping that folks like you, we, uh, a little bit we can do to spread the awareness. 
Yeah, yeah, because you know, when, when we see the satisfaction people have, and we think that how many people in the country really, really need this. Yes. And it's not about affording factor because chiropractic is expensive, but there's a heart within me where it tells that if I could just do something for somebody, you know, that's the kind of thing. So at the end of the day, it's just pain relief and a good night's sleep. That's the most peaceful thing anybody wishes for. That's right. So that's right. India, like I said, it's very populated, unlike other countries where the population is maybe one third, but there's so many chiropractors. So that country is kind of safe. They have their own chiropractors, they have their own team. But here, anything happens, nobody knows where to go apart from the hospital or their general physicians, or their regular physiotherapists. So yeah, I mean, more people like us are waiting for them to come down. You know, we can team up, help the community in a much, much better way. I'm not saying physiotherapy didn't help. Physiotherapy has done wonders. But we keep going for the best and the most efficient way. So, so that's why I integrate physio and chiro in, together. You know, so we, and uh, heal also works together in such a way that we incorporate and make it a holistic approach. Exactly. I'm not saying that what physiotherapists do, I can do better. No, it's it's right side of the coin and left side of the coin. No, both come and become one coin. So that's the best part. Yes, yes, that's right. And you know, at the end of the day, of course, one has to charge because you have such fantastic equipment in your in your premises in your clinic. Oh, thank you. Also, thank you. the amount that you you know the amount of research you've done, your experience. And uh, you know exactly every muscle and every bone in a person's body. So uh, the treatment itself is very specialized. Yes. So that, that's really fantastic. And also, I just wanted to know a little bit about sports physiotherapy. Oh, yes, 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 yes. I think my hero will do an excellent job uh, clarifying more doubts about sports physio because uh, that is coming, upcoming, but it is still in its initial stages. So, yeah, she'll enlighten your heart. Yes, yes, that's wonderful. Uh, enlighten me and as well as our audiences. Um, yes, yes that would yes, be really yes, lovely. Yes. But uh, Dr. Pritesh, you have been so insightful and so fantastic in explaining in detail thank what you, is the meaning you. of chiropractic medicine. And it's, it's become very much uh, simple for us to understand now. Yes, thank you for the opportunity to help me spread my word and you know help people, whoever I can, how much ever I can. So thank you for that. I find you thank a very so much, dedicated sir. person. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I'll just, I'll just uh, hand over to Hira. Thank you. A, thank a you. Thank question you. is Mariko, Jara. Yes. Uh, Mariko, back pain is a lot of pain. And now I have a shoulder mein fracture on my shoulder. So uh. right hand is not too much. I have a physio, but the right hand is not too much. But the back pain is a lot of pain for me. So what do you think of तो उसके लिए क्या करने का नहीं तो मुझे फिर क्लिनिक पे आके मुझे देखना पड़ेगा कि मैंने जस्ट बताया ना अभी कि कहां से पेन स्टार्ट हो रहा है कहां से नहीं हो रहा है मुझे वो सब पूरा एनालिसिस करके फिर मैं आपको बता पाऊंगा कि क्या कर सकते हैं क्या नहीं कर सकते ऐसे फोन पे मुझे मतलब कम समझ आता है कि एग्जैक्टली दर्द कहां हो सकता है तो मुझे आप आपका भी बात सुनना पड़ता है फिर मुझे मेरे ट्रीटमेंट के हिसाब से एनालिसिस भी करना पड़ता है वो चेकअप करने के बाद हम बता देते हैं कि एक्जेक्टली इशू कहां पर है और उसको कैसे टैकल कर सकते हैं बराबर हां हां थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू डॉक्टर प्रदेश थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू होप टू सी यू अगेन ऑन आवर शो डॉक्टर प्रदेश यस यस सून 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 थैंक यू थैंक यू सो हाय डॉक्टर हीरो Hello, hello. So happy to have you on our show today because I really want to know. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. This is about uh, sports physiotherapy. So I hear that you give a lot of guidance to people who are sportsmen or sports ladies. And uh, if a person gets a sports injury and comes to you, uh, how can you guide them? Please give us some insights. Yeah, yeah. So basically, sports injury is basically a lot of things. In cooperating, so it's like the technique, it's the muscle strength, the conditioning. So if he has a game, you know, there's always a season during it. So he has to be fit for the game during the performance, whatever he's giving, he, and he has to prepare for the game even before. So it's like a lot of things which goes, you know, hand in hand. So it's not just during the game. There's a lot of training and assessment which we have to do before the game as well. To prepare him for that performance which he has to give 
while he is you know into that that game zone so lot of strength conditioning lot of endurance building lot of if there is an injury like an acl tear or you know a lot of that kind of thing so you have to first deal with the pain get the pain settled down train the muscle you know and then you have to you know prepare him for the mechanics of the game which is going to be he heading him for the performance better in future when he is playing so a lot of the components are added up and that's how the sports field is you know building through yes that's right and now people are getting a little conscious about fitness and uh, yeah know, it's, it's become correct it's become more not it's become more of a hobby also people have a, an extra curricular sport training apart from everything just to you know be fit to get that passion into them to play a sport to be that competitive into the so they you know you score high with a, a friendly match you get a friendly match done in that society or with friends it's very encouraging and very nice to feel so it's always a, a sports person and also an extra curricular sport which is there oh, yes play. you must be delighted when uh... when they haven't been playing for a while because of the injury but when they come to you and they get back to the sport you must be feeling so happy yeah yeah it's it's really really nice to get them back to the field again it's this wow. different joy for them yes and uh, dr hinal how long uh, what is the duration typically of course i'm sure it depends on different types of injuries but when a person comes to you with a sports injury and how long does it take them to get healed to get back to normal okay so it's it's a very common question which everyone asks me like on the first visit like how long will this take so as you said it depends on the injury as well so it's it's a very much to do with the severity of the injury yes you know if in a small example if i take it then acl tear okay so there are grades of acl tear so whether it's grade 1 grade 2 grade 3 depending on the grade and the severity of the tear which is there yes. Yes. we you know try to narrow down or try to program the exercises or the treatment or the uh, you know the entire physio sessions into that phase and there are a lot of other components which are also like whether he is active whether he is still playing that game or was that injury long back was it chronic and he was playing the game even in spite of the injury being there and now yes. it has you know again come up through all of the pains or the aches and pains which he has neglected in the past and now since it has been aggravated so much he is addressing it now so that is the course of the pain and the progression of the injury also matters also third point is sometimes the age you know who so as the age progresses our body tries to take a little longer than the usual younger days to heal oh, yes so again healing process becomes very different from age group younger age group to the older age group if the person is getting there and still the healing process goes slightly lower it takes a little while to you know get the injury heal second then the next part becomes the supplements or the body nourishment what they are taking how much how good is that for the injury to get healed so if you see nearly if the person is very very active with the sport and his muscles are really strong to support that it becomes very faster to you know wrap up the injury or the progress that's right. level that's right yes yes and if it is very sedentary and is still he has that effects previously in the past but right now he is not able to cope up with it then it will take a little while to go through but otherwise sports has always been a faster recovery phase but it is very nice to you know go into the slow phase if depending on what the pain says so sure sure dr hirul there's a question yeah. for you would you like to share your phone number with our viewers yeah yeah we will we will be sharing the e cards with all the viewers so that they can directly you know go through everything all our website and other information and the phone numbers as well okay great during the course of our interview you are going to share the e card yeah yeah we will be doing that through okay. you or whichever way is perfect yes lovely that's wonderful and uh, i heard that you are an expert at pilates training and yeah 
<laughs> can this be done by uh, any age group you know old fuddy duddies or even people who are already in pain can we do pilates yeah so basically pilates is very very low impact exercise program so it was uh, it was done for the person so it, it builded up or started for a very holistic approach like a lot of body alignment a lot of body centering was involved in pilates so pilates is like a mind and body connection which is rarely seen in any of the program which is being practiced right now but pilates is art core of you know connecting your body through and knowing where and how you're moving your body so it's like what your muscle is working or what action you're doing so to get that control to get that understanding of your body pilates has been designed in such a way that it helps you in any of the pain or rehab matters in that way so if you see if a guy who is very young and he wants to go to school and he he's not able to hold his bag of course now since past two years everything is online but in the early days there were these aches and pains for a student to you know hold his bag or something so there are a lot of uh, alignment and the issues which were there and for coming right from the core so core is like a power house for us so a lot of understanding or centering around the core is there in pilates which we usually understand in that sense and once we get the understanding of the core the power house which is the main thing of moving your lower limbs like the leg while you're walking or doing anything with your hands everything is centered so core is all your abdominal your back your buttocks and everything so if that fires up and that gives you the center everything else is in check so pilates has a lot of focus on to you know helping in building up or improving the strength building up or improving the flexibility you want lot of centering yourself lot of breathing control as i said lot of mind and body connection and it's a very low impact activity and it always encourages you to not stop the other like not stop the gym not stop the other activities or exercises which you're doing it's just it just give you a baseline or a you know framework or a chart that do this where you are going to the gym make yourself train free or make yourself into that center and use that core in such a way and align yourself so that you don't land up into an injury so it it That's may right. give you that understanding so that you're always safe whenever you're doing any other impactful exercises or movement so it's very safe and very we very encouraging exercise regime which we do it and it is done it for all i mean everyone can do it there are different uh, you know equipments also in pilates so it's like a reformer training a core aligning training barrel and different other training which you know just increases your challenges and it gives you that challenge to go into certain levels and everything so it's like a progressive level where you can challenge your body and take it to an extreme which you can you know look forward to That's and it is done right. for all the age group like there are people for 60 just to be fit to get those muscles toned and you know just not to be flabby because there is like a lot of you know cosmetic awareness also which people have so pilates give you a lot of fit or tone a body in a very safe manner so it's it's encouraged and motivated by many of them and many of them practice it in every age group so it's it's like a versatile thing all over that's amazing because the people can reach their potential you know the amount of strength they have and what is exactly. that yeah like everyone everyone would say that i can't go to gym because i can't lift those heavy weights but in pilates it's like you are lifting your body weight itself so if you lift that body weight in a complete alignment position you're good to go so there's a reformer where you have to lie down if you drag the carriage off and away it's your body weight which is giving you the resistance which is the easiest way because you're carrying your body everywhere during the day so it's like you have to do that and you're trained for it in pilates so it's good that way that's amazing really amazing yeah. and uh, as a lay person from what i understand of physiotherapy supposing there there is a game like badminton or golf so traditionally we feel we should strengthen our legs you know 
maybe the calf muscles. But uh, now the trend in physiotherapy is to strengthen the lower back muscles, the core, the uh, upper legs, the thighs. So is that how physiotherapy works? Correct. So as now, as the building process and the progress of the field is being progressing, it's more of a holistic way, as I said. So a lot of understanding is building up that a body is not in segments, is a whole. So if your hand is moving, there's something happening on your ankle, there's something happening on the core, on your abdominal. There is a chain which is there through your finger to your toe. So right. it's like a continuous body which we always, you know, picture as. We now, we are not picturing as, you know, just if there's a shoulder. Of course, we'll address that first. But is there something... So there are people who will talk on the phone who have a neck issue, but at the same time, they might have a shoulder issue also. There is someone who is cycling. They might have a shoulder issue who at the same time, they'll have a hip issue also because they are in that position for a very long time. So it's not a segment which we always address nowadays. It's like the entire body which we take into consideration. And that's how we heal it or that's how we progress it that way and even muscle they work into a couple they never work only one muscle is not made doing an action it's something you know if your hand is moving up a lot of your lats a lot of your core a lot of your biceps triceps and your deltoid every every single thing is working so muscle also has a lot of combination with the other mus muscles to work or you know just achieve that movement so you can't just you know narrow down your vision to one point or one segment you have to see other areas if there are any needles over there yes that's amazing and then uh, what is the build up uh, of this career option in india what is the eligibility for young people if they want to take up sports physio or chiropractic medicine uh, okay then... so uh, so for normal physio if you see they have to give an entrance exam after the 12th and after giving science, you can select a science stream, give your 12th, and after that, there's an entrance exam which you have to give. Once you clear that, if they are eligible for the physiotherapy colleges, okay, based on that, uh, the score, depending on the ranking which they get. So we have to do a bachelor's, which is four and a half years. Yes. And then we have to go, if you they have to pursue master's, which is can be in musculoskeletal cardio, neuro or you know community health services so there are different things for the masters okay. specialty so you can you have to do two years of masters again that also has a individual college entrance or you have a combined college entrance also which goes through different colleges and again there is a ranking system and based on that you have to clear or you get an admit to a college Oh. So that's how it goes many, on. Many years of studies and I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. In, in and time. for chiropractor, I'm sure he can guide you through. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes Dr. Chiropractic is basically like if you go to the States or you go abroad, then there's like a five year course in bachelor's and then two years in master's. Okay. Now, because I've already done my course on my post graduation from physiotherapy. So they have these special courses where they skip the theoretical part to a certain extent and go straight on to the add-on the skill set. Okay. So so my course duration was one and a half year that way. But yeah. each college it depends. But anyways, masters in uh, chiropractic goes anywhere between one to one and a half years only. Okay. And if you do separately bachelors in the other country, then it's a minimum of five years, which we've already done in our graduation and post graduation. So yeah. So that's how you skip that process only because of the eligibility. Otherwise, you have to go from bachelor's. You cannot just straight off jump to chiropractic. That's right. That's right. So uh, years of training plus internship. Plus yes, training. yes. All of that is held into account before you applying for it. Otherwise, they don't give you a seat. Ah, okay. So that, that's nice for our viewers, young students to know that. Yes. A lot of them are uh, inclined towards science and towards medicine. And now we wanted to know about both of you as people. What was the great passion that put you on to chiropractic medicine? You already told me, Sitesh, but once again, and Dr. Hiral, your passion for physiotherapy uh, as yeah. against other disciplines and specialties. 
I have always wanted to pursue something in medical to you know, help people and get them feel better and I can be a part of the healing process. And sports, of course, I had a passion for sports individually also. I used to play basketball and other. I was always active in one of the sports in my olden days, I would say. However, I'm not that old. But yeah, there were, there were days that... Say that. <laughs> <laughs> there were days that... I, yeah. Basically, basically, our drive and our wish to help people to the maximum and you know make lives better. That's the whole thing driving us. That we have to make someone better, someone better, because there's always somebody who's suffering, and if we can do something for them, we sleep better at night. Yes, yes. A lot of satisfaction over there. Yes. Yes. Yeah, wonderful. It's a it's a kind of social service, you know, to care for others as if they're your own, and to make them lead better lives but it's been so interesting and and so completely uh, insightful it's like an education speaking to both of you and it's uh, absolutely wonderful a lot of people have been asking for your phone numbers so uh, are you going to share the numbers or do you want that they should contact me and i should give your numbers to them do you want us to verbally uh, give you the numbers right now or maybe share the e-cards to you and you can just circulate them uh, whichever way you feel comfortable? Uh, we can do that. We can put it up on our Facebook page. Yeah, yeah. So we have our e-cards ready. So, you know, all the details are on that because I don't know how many people have their phones ready to keep the numbers down. So okay. you can just uh, share the e-cards that are already made and you can just circulate them. So that will be helpful. Sure, I'll surely do that if you can send them to me. Meanwhile, I'll just give them our IAI3 phone number. So yes. You can contact me and I will forward your phone numbers to them. Yes, yes. yes that's fine. Good. So yes. we wish you tremendous and huge success in thank you. people. Thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. much. Thank you. Thank so thank caring you. and such a beautiful couple. Thank you so much for coming. Thank, thank, you. You, thank, you. thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. See you both again on our show. Thanks a lot. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. One of the most uh, interesting and wonderful interactive interview. Very Thank nice. You. Thank you. That's Thank you so much. much. Thank you, dear. Thank you, sir, Dr. Giru. And for the sake of our viewers who wanted the phone numbers, I will share my phone number with you. I am a member of IAI3. On our lane, there are always huge chariots and people dancing and singing and going past and campaigning for the election. So please excuse me. Yes. <laughs> right? So uh, this is my phone number. Our viewers who had asked for the phone number, please do contact me. My name is Anjali Sangvi and the phone number is 98815. 0860. Okay, okay ma'am. I'll do that. Sure. Uh -huh. I'll do that and uh, please do contact me. I will definitely uh -huh. forward the numbers to you. Yeah, I've just uh, sent you the e cards. Oh, okay. I will forward them to Dr. Nika and we will immediately put it up. Did you get it, Veena ma'am? I've put up the number. Ah. ah, thank you. You're welcome. Welcome, ma'am. So, Dr. Pitesh, I'll forward this to our president and she can immediately put it up. Yes, yes. yes. that would be yes. very helpful. Thank you. Yes, that would be wonderful. Yeah, Nitaji, I'm just sending this e card to you, Dr. Pitesh. Okay. Uh, have we done with, should I stop the recording and FB Live? Uh, yes, Neetha ji, I've just sent the e-card to you on your WhatsApp number. Okay. Is it possible that we can put it up on this screen today? Okay, surely. On YouTube channel, I'll definitely put, uh, and here as a post, it will go. Uh, on a okay. page, it will go as a post. Uh, so, are we going to do it now or are we going to put it on the YouTube video? YouTube video, I'll put it on. Okay, okay. That, that's fine. But meanwhile, people can contact me and I will 
forward here you can the share the link here in the chat uh, on laptop yeah, i've forwarded the e card uh, to pritesh sir i'm asking uh, doctors yes. both doctor, the doctors question for you dr pritesh I'm I'm currently using my tablet and I don't have my e-card on that. I'll just have to share the screen with you. It's on my phone. So here, here itself you can show. So in the live itself, everyone can see. Uh, you want to see the e-card? Yeah, here itself you can show. Oh, okay. One second. Let me let me try. You can hold it against the camera. Is that right, Netaji? Uh, fine, fine. Ritesh, you, you can verbally also send. Yeah, right. give the numbers verbally or in the chat. And if it's, uh, it's taking time, we may uh, wrap up and then uh, later on we can put it on YouTube. Yes, I think you are right, Nitaji. I think Pritesh doctor has put his number, we put his the number, number. His number onto the chat so people can take it down. Thank you so much, Dr. Pritesh. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Very nice of you. Thank, thank you, you again and wonderful session we had. Thank you. Pleasure is also mine. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye-bye. Bye, Dr. Bye-bye. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.